Can you please take a look if I did correctly? Uh, this one's about a cooling tower. An evaporative cooling tower is used by a large power generating facility. The circulating water enters the tower at 1000 GPM at 90 degrees. The dry bulb temperature of the air at the inlet is 70 degrees and the wet bulb temperature is 50. The exit temperature of the air is 80 at 80% 80 RH. The cooling tower is designed to cool the water to 70. The needed rate of makeup water is most nearly what? So this is a really common question um, asking about makeup water. So obviously, as you're um, cooling the condenser water, some of it is evaporating into the airstream. And the rate at which that, that condenser water is partially being evacuated into the airstream is the rate at which it's leaving the condenser water system because it's, it's an open system, it's changing phase, and it's no longer being pumped around. And as a result, we have to pump makeup water into the condenser water system. And um, the question is how much? Well, however much is being evaporated into the air is being removed from the water. So how do we figure that out? Um, I think you got the answer right. So I'm not gonna go into too much detail here, but let's just talk through the solution path that you took. And I'll make a couple of comments here on, on parts that I think are, are curious. And uh, so the first thing you did was you identified the volume flow rate of water through the condenser water system is 1000 GPM. And then you noted the temperatures and you labeled them. So incoming as, um, as 90 and then leaving at 70. So that's good. The only thing I thought was interesting here is that you wrote DB and WB, meaning dry bulb and wet bulb, but that doesn't apply because we're just talking about water temperatures here. So that made me a little nervous, but you did the right math. So I just ignored it. Um, so uh, yeah, that was one thing. Um, and then you calculated the amount of heat being removed from the condenser water as 10 million BTU per hour, which is right. And then you set that equal. You said the amount of heat that's being removed from the water is the amount of heat that's being taken into the air. And you represented that as 4.5 CFM Delta H, which is absolutely correct. And then uh, you identified that both, both the air inlet and outlet are fully defined states, you know, uh, temperature and wet bulb or temperature and RH, which gives you the ability to find out enthalpy, specific humidity, and uh, specific volume, which is gonna be good to know. And then the next thing that you did is you wrote this equation, the mass flow rate of water, the mass flow rate of water that's being removed from the condenser water through evaporation into the air is equal to M dot air delta humidity ratio. And that is absolutely correct. Um, now, something a little bit interesting happened here. You wrote volume flow rate equals volume over mass, which I would agree with, but then you wrote mass equals volume over volume flow rate. Is that true? We're going to end up with time on top. I got a little confused around this part. Um, Oh, but then you, but then this is good. You, you plugged in CFM, which is a volume flow rate and divided it by specific volume. So you did the right math, but I think these might be written backwards. So, okay. On the outcome, but I'm not sure how you knew. I use V dot as specific volume and V is oh. actual volume CFM. Like I do it other way around the way you usually do it. So, oh, I, whenever I see the dot, I always think rate like per unit time. I've never seen specific volume written as V dot. Well, my professor used to do that, so I got it. Really? Used yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we're good here then. Um, cool. All right. So that's the, that is the mass flow rate, and that is the right value. So that comes down here. We have a mass. Is it a mass flow rate or is it a mass? Should be a mass flow rate, right? Pounds of air, CFM, cubic feet per pound. It should be per minute, right? Does it cancel out like feet cube per minute? Yeah, it should be minute, right? Yeah. Yeah, at this point, we want it to be a rate. We want time in there. And we had CFM, so we should still be per minute. So this should be pounds per minute. What's impressive here is that you continue to you continue forward and the mistakes don't propagate through. So it's like I'm 
I'm curious how that's happening. <laughs> some you do on your head and some on paper. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, once you get comfortable, if you want to take some shortcuts and not write every little thing out, I totally welcome that. But I would encourage you in your studies, in your studying to write all of the units. Because if you write none of the units, I know you did it in your head. But if you write 50% of the units or 75% of the units and then skip others, that makes me a little nervous. <laughs> I, it would make me nervous if I was looking back at my own work and I was like, I'm not sure I could follow it through. But everyone's different. And I certainly don't want to be uh, like hypercritical because you got the right answer. So there's not there's not a lot to <laughs> go over here. Um, yeah. And then just finishing up, you did mass flow rate times the change in humidity ratio, which is correct. And you got the right mass flow rate, which is pounds. This should still be pounds per minute at this point. And then you change to gallons and you get the right answer. So we're good there. The only other thing I noticed was you, you took the time to find the mass flow rate of water, which is the mass flow rate of water around the condenser water system. So this is the water side. So I guess you calculated it, but then you decided not to use it for anything. You just sort of found it and then put it to the side. 